by the Israelites wanted to have a king to be like all the people around them. And so God gave them King Saul. But as Samuel told them, King Saul didn't turn out to be a good king. Samuel said to Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint you, that means to pour oil on your head, to be king over his people, over Israel. Now listen to the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I remember what Amalek did to you, Israel, how he waited for you on the road when you came from Egypt. Now go and punish Amalek for what he did and utterly destroy all that they had. Don't spare them. Kill men, woman, child, baby, ox, sheep, camel and ass. So Saul attacked the Amalekites near Egypt and he captured Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and completely destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the Israelites kept the best of the sheep and the oxen and the lambs and didn't destroy them. They only destroyed what was not very good. So the word of the Lord came to Samuel. He said, I regret that I have made Saul the king because he's turned back from following me and has not done my commandments. And it upset Samuel and he cried to the Lord all night. And... Samuel was very sad that Saul was turning away from God. Very, very, very sad. And we should be sad too when people turn away from God. So Samuel came to Saul and Saul saw him and said, May you be blessed of the Lord. I have done the commandment of the Lord, which was not true. Samuel said, well, what then does this bleating of sheep and lowing of oxen mean? Saul tried to explain. He said, well, they came from the Amalekites, but the people, they kept the best sheep and the best oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God. And the rest we destroyed, as we were told. But that's not true. They had kept the best for themselves, but when he got caught... He said, oh, no, we kept it to give to God, which was not true. So Samuel told Saul, the Lord sent you on a journey and told you, go and completely destroy those sinners, the Amalekites. Why then didn't you do what the voice of the Lord said? Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifice as in obedience to the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to listen to God than all the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft, and being stubborn is like idolatry. So because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. And that is so true. What God wants is that we obey his word. He doesn't need animals, he doesn't need sacrifices, because, as David later said, the cattle on a thousand hills are his. And what can we give to him? What he wants is not us to kill an animal and sacrifice it and burn its fat. He wants our heart. He wants us to listen to his word, to read his word and to obey it. Reading his word now. That's what we're trying to do. That's right, to read God's word. Saul said, I have sinned. I have disobeyed the commandments of God uh, because I feared the people and I obeyed their voice. So you see, he's saying, well, I didn't obey the voice of God. I obeyed the voice of the people. And we can be like that when we know what God has said, but we want to do what seems best in the eyes of people and so we're listening to their voice rather than God's voice. Nevertheless, forgive my sin please, I beg you, and come back with me so that we can worship the Lord together. Samuel said, I will not go back with you because you have rejected the word of the Lord and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. Samuel turned to go away but Saul grabbed hold of the jacket 
the mantle that Samuel was wearing, and it tore. So Samuel told him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to a neighbour of yours who is better than you. The strength of Israel will not lie or change his mind, for he is not a man that he would be like that. Now that neighbour to whom the kingdom was to be given, who was better than Saul, was David. Saul said, I have done sin before God, but I beg you, just honour me now, please, in front of all Israel, in front of the eyes of the people, and come back with me, that together we may worship the Lord your God. So he talks about the Lord your God, not my God or our God. And he just wanted to be seen to be worshipping God. And that is unfortunately how it is with many people, that it's a case of going to church and being seen to be worshipping God. So Samuel agreed and he went back with Saul and Saul worshipped the Lord. So just for a few little brief moments in this life, he showed and made it appear that he really did worship God when in his heart he had rejected God and God had rejected him. And Samuel returned to Ramah, where he lived, and Saul went to his house. Samuel didn't see Saul again as long as he lived, but he mourned for him, and the Lord regretted that he had made Saul Israel's king. So then Samuel mourned for Saul. He was so sorry that a man who could have been in the kingdom will not be in the kingdom. And that's how we should be with people who turn away. We should have a, a heart that really bleeds for people. And we should really want to try to help people to come to the kingdom. And when people start to come and then they turn away, we should also pray for them and mourn for them.